previously on The Bill. I'm taking that job in Scotland and the kids are coming with me. I'm never going to tell you who your father is, so deal with it. Hey, do us a favour and just... to put across my side of the story. I just don't think it's fair that I've been taken off driving duties, ma'am. You were racing police vehicles. If you were civilians, you would be looking at a prison sentence. I think I'd rather have that than have to work for there. Really? Then I'll tell that to the superintendent. In the meantime, get down to the Larkmead estate. You are on foot patrol. Is that it? No, Gemma. That is not it. Not by a long chalk. I was in the back numbering the papers when I heard it go. Did you see anyone run away? We know exactly who it bloody was. It's the kids off the estate, they come in here and they shout abuse and they help themselves to the stock. And you're not going to do a thing about it? Well, can you give us any names? Paul Simmons is the ringleader. There are loads of other hangers-on. But neither of you witnessed them outside the shop this morning? No. They could chuck us out of the job for this. You, maybe. I was on my way to a legit call. Yes, I was already shown as attending. You were racing me. Basic procedure, love. You back down when the area car is nearer. I know it, you know it, and the super knows it. I've got nothing to worry about. All right, so you think you're going to get away with it, do you? When I fill them in with the details, yeah. I'm sure they'd be very interested to hear about your mate deliberately slowing me down. I know what are you talking about? A traffic cop on a motorbike obstructing me on my way to an eye call. Ring any bells? Come on, Des, you can't mention that. Can't mention it? That's my key defence, Dutch. What about official disciplinary action? I had something else in mind, actually. What's that? If you had to describe Des in a few words, what would they be? Oh, aggressive, arrogant. Proud? Definitely. <laughs> well, hopefully some of that pride will be knocked out of him by the end of today. What about Gemma? Takes two to tango, same treatment, I'm afraid. What is this treatment? It's in hand. Oh. <laughs> All units from Sierra Oscar, recent lost or stolen from 16A Langton Street. Grey Rover, index number, Hotel 764, X-Ray, Tango, Sierra. That's just around the corner. Sierra Oscar from 249, show us attending over. Great. So what make of car was it? A Rover. And where was it parked, Mrs Haynes? At the back. I went out to make a cup of tea. And when I looked out again, it was gone. Peter would go mad. Do you mind if you have a quick look? Help yourself. What happened to the shop? Boy lobbed a brick through the window. He's a nasty piece of work. He's been causing trouble around here for ages. You're not right there, are you? I hope they caught him. Your car's been stolen, Sam. What? I was just telling these officers it was outside. Uh, there's been a mistake. Sorry? I put it in the garage before I went to work. Didn't you think to call you something before you called us in? I was sure you couldn't have taken it. It was sat there after you'd left for work. Easy mistake to make. Don't worry. Bye. Come on. It's not quite with it some of the time. Well, nice to see she's keeping a watchful eye over you anyway. You lot love it, don't you? All this tea and sympathy crap. You're not hearing me, love. When I arranged to meet you in a certain place at a certain time, you meant to be there. Because, Tracy, that's how it worked. Look, I've got to go. No, I'll call you. I take it out as professional. Yeah, it's a snout. Look, watch my eyes at the minute. I want you to do me a favour. D. Anikson's on leave for a few weeks. You want me as acting D.I.? I don't think so. You know, I want you to review the CSU's case, Lord. Gav, I've, I've got a lot on at the moment. Yeah, we'll delegate. But can't June manage on her own? Now, D. Anikson wants somebody with solid detective experience to make sure there's no time bombs waiting for when she gets back. So stop whinging and get into CSU. Oh, and Phil, tread carefully. June Ackman has that unit, and I don't need to make her feel like she's been sidelined. Look, I'm supposed to have reasonable access, right? 
Scotland. How reasonable is that? He won't even look me in the eye. It was an accident. It was nobody's fault. I want you to get onto a solicitor, right? Because I am going to take this thing back to court. Who's he talking to? A solicitor, I think. Yeah, well, I need her to know that I am being deadly serious about this. I heard about it yesterday. You must feel awful. What? Brandon's kid cutting herself when you were supposed to be looking after her. It was an accident, all right? I'm not implying anything else. Do you think that's what kicked it all off between yeah. him and his ex-wife? Right, good. Brandon, I just wanted to say how sorry we are about what happened yesterday. And if there's anything that you and I can do. Well, if you can think of a way of stopping my ex-wife from going to Scotland with my kids, then let me know. Otherwise, no, there is nothing you can do. Criminal damage at news agents. It's got racial overtones. Oh, right. Have they, uh, they had trouble before? Well, just the usual kids giving them grief, but nothing on this scale. Mm -hmm. Done a few door to doors, haven't we? But nothing so far. I'll take it. I'll come too. No, I'll be fine. That's okay. Uh, you could do the company, couldn't you? Hi, Fred June. Cavalry's arrived. <laughs> So no chance you and your wife... Ex-wife. Ex-wife could come to an amicable agreement? No. My parents loathed each other, but even they waited after my A-levels before they split up. Obviously did you the pair of good. Well, if it's case people drifting apart, then... It wasn't. Were other parties involved? Yeah. Another man? Nope. Another woman? Would you mind? What? Can we not talk about this? Fine. Ladies, nice chats with the locals. Is that your bag? Is it truly a bag? 432, any units west of the pats? There's a grey rover, index hotel 764, X-ray Tango Sierra. It's driving erratically up the Bering Road. Well, just because you're not speeding about at 100 miles an hour doesn't mean what you're doing now isn't worthwhile. Hey, maybe that's that car that that mad old woman was throwing about. Or maybe she's not so mad after all. Sierra Oscar and 432 from Sierra 1. Just spotted your grey rover in Stanmore Street. Keep up the commentary, Gary. I'll get the main set link in. OK, Gary, you're linked to the main set. Vehicle's at the far end of Stanmore Street. We're still trying to catch up. We'll try harder. He's mounted the traffic island. Gone left, left, left into Andover Road. Come on, put your foot down. Vehicle turning left, left, left into Hamilton Road. Whoa! Vehicle is mounted to pavement. Ah, oh, he's gonna lose him, I know he is. Lorry's obstructing. We've lost sight of the vehicle. Still heading down Hamilton Road. Still no sign of the vehicle. Sierra Oscar from Sierra One, that is a loss. Ah, I knew it! I knew it! I knew he'd lose him! Do you know what? I think you've got mental problems. People should understand how frustrating this is. I feel utterly powerless. Well, I do know how you feel, Mrs. Aziz. I promise you we take incidents like this very seriously. I'm not being driven out of my shop by some hooligans. Well, someone must have seen something. Peter, has anyone spoken to your mum? No, I don't think so. You should go see her. I wouldn't bother. She won't be any use. Are you joking? She's better than CCTV, your mum. But she sees everything sat that window all day. Peter, will that be all right to have a quick word? You wouldn't mind, would you? The thing is, she's been in bed most morning. Flu or something. Oh, it looks like she's rallied. Oh, I'll, I'll just make sure she's up to it, if that's OK. Yep, of course. You got those ones for me as well, would you? It, uh, look, you don't have to bother with that one. Jim's already liaised with D.I. Nixon. Yeah, well, why didn't you nick him under Section 4, Public Order Act? Because if we didn't get a conviction, we'd be putting the wife in danger. Mm. Well, I'll keep tabs on him. Bet you any money you get him on another charge. Well, thank you very much for your advice. But Jim knows exactly how to proceed on this case. Just trying to speed the process up, June. No wonder you're so backed up.
That's definitely the same car, and that's the kid who was driving it. He was going pretty fast, Dad. There's no way you can say that for sure. It's him. I know where this. Sierra Oscar from 249. Can I get a PNC check on Silver Rover? Registration number Hotel 764, X-ray Tango Sierra. Over. Right, let's see your documents. Oh, what are you on about? We weren't driving it. I just saw you turn up the road. You get your eyes, Sissy, because you're wrong, mate. I'm not your mate. Now, what's your name? Right, get out. Oh, get off me! You can't do that! I just have. Uh, Paul Simmons. Do you know the owner of this vehicle still thinks it's in the garage? I don't think so. He lent it to me this morning. So you have been driving it then? No, I'll wash it for him. 249 from Sierra Oscar. Silver Rover Hotel 76. Wait there. X ray Tango Sierra is registered to a Mr. Peter Haynes. Sierra Oscar from 249 received. Right, I'm taking him back to Nick. What for? Take him without consent. You know what these kids are like, acting big time in front of his mates. If I get him back there, he'll crack up. Right, okay to talk to your mum? Yeah. Yeah, come in. Cheers. I'm TDC Kane, Sun Hill, this is PC Bradford. Mr and Mrs Aziz across the road have had their windows bricked. We are wondering if you saw anything? No, I didn't see anything. The Azizes are a nice couple. Lucky it was just the window. I don't think they feel so lucky. Seems to me they've been suffering a lot of abuse for a long time now. <sighs> Terrible, isn't it? Only so much we can do, though. Adele mentioned that some kid had been given on grief over the last few days. Paul Simmons, do you know? Vaguely, yes. I, I knew him when he was younger. They don't need me to help them cross the roads anymore. I just told you. I was right, come on, let's move it. Come on, move it. Just wait there. Let's move it. Hey. Get it. Go on, beat it, you lot. Get on your way. What are you doing? I'm not taking that lot down the stairs. I'm out with doing paperwork all day. I'm not carrying the door now. You can do that. You can do that. It's quite some collection you got there. Just knickknacks, really. Not worth anything apart from sentimental value. Drives Peter nuts. Done it, love. If it doesn't have a purpose, chuck it out. That's what you say, isn't it, Pete? Right, we'll leave you to it then. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't have been of more use. I'll see you out. Can you do this? Here. Yeah. Right, get in. Are you mad? You can't take him down the station in that. You need to go for a car. Oh, just shoot yourself. Dad! <laughs> Kath. I've left my warrant card in there. It's all right if I need it back. Uh, nice of you to help the Uzizis out. Neighbourly. You wanted to say something, didn't you? He's terrified. That's why he won't say anything. OK, Mrs. Holmes. Peter told me. The kids are blackmailing him. Bullying him. Saying that if he doesn't do what they say, they'll come and get me. That's a very serious allegation. He'll kill me if he finds out that I've said this to you. He's so frightened. Well, then I should go talk to him. No. Talk to me before you do anything about it. He goes to do the crossings at 1.30. Come back then. Why is your son being blackmailed? That one, that's my favourite. My husband bought it for me last time we went on holiday together. Do you remember, Pete? Anglesey, wasn't it? Would you let the man go, Mum? Sorry about her. Talk the hind leg off a donkey. Thank you. If you jump out now, you'll bleed your neck. Pull over, you nutter! It was you driving that car this morning, wasn't it? No! You fancy yourself as a bit of a stunt driver, don't you? How about this for the stunt, eh? You got no seat belts on. If I slam the anchors on now, you go straight through that windscreen. 
Good job I got quick reflexes, eh? Oh, Jack. St. Hughes have called a multi-agency meeting to review security. The press is still all over that baby snatch story. Well, perhaps the media interests will persuade them to put a tape in their CCTV. I'm heading over there this morning and I was wondering whether I could have D.S. McAllister to sit in with me. You know, I heard she did some good work down there the other day. Yeah, Eva mentioned it to me. I thought she would have been back at work by now. Well, have you talked to her recently? Uh, no, no, I thought I'd leave it, you know, what with the baby and everything. I think she's got enough on her plate. Right. I'll send her your regards then, shall I? Yeah. There's no point interviewing Paul until Pete Haynes can confirm he didn't give him the keys and can't get hold of him. It's all right. He's already coughed to drive in the car. And we'll get the little blade banned for this. Uh, when do you admit to that? On the way back. What's happened to his face? Oh, he knocked it when he was getting out the car. Ready to play ball, mate? Could you tell us how you came to be in the possession of Peter Haynes' car keys this morning? I just told you he gave them to me. He said the car was in the garage. And it doesn't matter whether he gave them to you or not. You're 16, you shouldn't have been driving it, especially not at that speed. I never drove the car. You've already admitted to driving the car. I want you to turn the tape off. Why? I want to ask something off the record. Paul Simmons has asked for the interview to be terminated at 11.45. If I want to make a complaint about a copper assaulting me, them threatening to kill me. How do I go about that? Oh, don't tell me you're gonna take that little blade's word over mine. I'd take pretty much anyone's word over yours. He's got a big bruise on his face. You're gonna get crucified for this. If you'd have just got in the car like I told you, you could vouch for me now. He's just playing games. Yeah, well, I'd play along because he's got a bloody strong hand. Stronger than he even realises. How do you mean? Even if no one believes that you attacked him, threatened him, all he has to do is say that you were driving that car and you screwed. Well, you remember then? Me and you brought him back to the station together. Don't be ridiculous. There was a bunch of lads who saw you drive off in the car. I'd get Paul out of the station as soon as possible. We don't know he was driving that car. We can't say for sure that Pete Haynes didn't give him the keys. We've got nothing on him. Well, what about the criminal damage to the car? Unless Peter Haynes decides not to press charges, me and you have had it. Oh, no. You've had it. Hey, listen, Dutch. Me and you are in this together. Get lost, Ace. You better get on my side. Otherwise, I might open my big gob about your mate on the motorbike. How much more maternity leave have you got left? A few more weeks. <laughs> oh. Mm. I can't wait to have you back at the Nick. Who says I'm coming back? What, you've decided to become a full-time mum? No. I don't want that either. I'm putting him for a transfer. Is it because you feel awkward about coming back? I think awkward would be an understatement. You know, life moves on, Debbie. People have new things to gossip about. I know it's hard to take, but it's the nature of the place. I'm not worried about the gossip. Is it about being reminded of Tom Chandler? It's Jack Meadows, isn't it? I don't think that I'm able to work with him again. I'm sure he's not jumping up and down at the prospect of me working with him either. You're a bloody good copper. And if he's got any sense, he won't want to lose you. Well, I wouldn't be so sure. And ultimately, it's not his decision. It's mine. And, to be honest, I've made it. Right. Paul's maintaining that you lent him the car. See, the thing is, we've got it back. But it's, uh, it's in a bit of a state. Yeah, there's only hundred quid's worth of damage stops. Have you made an arrest? I'm sorry? The lad that did this. No, they're here about something different. Do you mind if we just, uh... Then what are you here about? His car's been stolen. No disrespect, Pete. But does that really take priority over what's happened to me and Adele? I'm sure somebody else is dealing with that, sir. Look, basically, we just need to know how you want to proceed. Uh, tell me where the car is and I'll collect it. 
Are you saying that you want to drop the charges altogether? I gave Paul the keys. He hasn't done anything wrong. Just, I want to be left alone. Two nil. What? Result. I'm expecting Mrs. Falconer from social services. Can you give me a call when she sure. arrives? Yes. Oh, hi. Brandon's not here, I'm afraid. Fine. Can I talk to you? Yeah. Come on up. Do you think Mrs. Haynes is serious about this blackmail stuff? I think she believes whatever her son tells her. Well, she would, wouldn't she? She said Peter would kill her if you found out she'd been telling me since. Oh, it's an expression, isn't it? I always used to say it to my parents. They'll kill me if they find out. Don't mean anything. Well, I never said it. My kids don't say it about me. What? They probably wouldn't have any reason to say it about you, your kids. But you're great, Dad. Thank you. Oh, I don't believe it. What? Tanya's here. Where is she? Looking for you, I expect. Anne, I would have liked the chance to explain what happened yesterday, but you're in such a hurry to leave. I'm not interested in explanations. I came here to apologise. I never anticipated Brandon dumping the kids in the office. Well, no, to be honest, neither did we. Uh, look, I'll, uh, I'll get you a chair. Sorry. Who's the bird? Brandon's wife. Yeah, he's done well for himself. They're divorced. She realised she could do better. It's not exactly a childproof environment, is it? <laughs> and you're all very busy people. Far too busy to supervise two young children. Well, yes, to be truthful. Strange decision to leave the kids here instead of taking time out and going home with them. Look, Tonya, I don't think it's my place to comment on any of this. Well, I also find it strange that Brandon sees fit to accuse me, via his lawyer, of neglecting my children's welfare, given what happened yesterday. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Just checking I got the story straight, for future reference. He's a bit stressed out about all this. We all are. You got the day off work, then? I work in the evenings. Tanya's got some drinks thing to go to this afternoon at Meridian Bar, so she's taking the day off. I take it you're Brandon's partner. Oh, no. <laughs> no, nothing like that. Oh, I meant partner as in police partner. Oh, right. Uh, well, we don't really operate a partner system in Britain, but... Yeah. Me and Brandon like to work very closely with each other. Do you think there might be any chance of them getting back together again? <laughs> I hope not. Why's that? I don't particularly fancy living in a menage a trois with Brandon. Excuse me? I'm Tanya's girlfriend. Blinding bit of driving you did this morning, Tom. How long did you manage to keep up with that car? All of 30 seconds, marvellous. Call me old-fashioned, Des, but I don't like to risk the lives of pedestrians. Not what I've heard. Sarge, that Paul Simmons is ready for release now. That's the kid you were looking for this morning. The one these is mentioned. Better go tell Brandon. You better hurry up, Sarge. He's got a meeting with his probation officer. A DC can you need a word with him before you release him, Sarge? If you want to play hardball, Brandon, that's fine with me. Given the complete lack of attention you've paid our kids in the last what few lack years, of attention? I, I think you're weekend. playing a very dangerous game. And you think it's okay to do this in my workplace? Because I think it's petty and vindictive. And I think my sergeant feels the same way. Oh, please, this has nothing to do with me. Exactly. You're just his childminder. Is your ex so brief, Brandon? She's an accountant. I bet she screws you on the maintenance payments. We found Paul Simmons. What? The kid the Azizis think did in the shop front. He's in custody. They're just about to release him now. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Well, you missed all the entertainment. Brandon's missus. It's not his missus anymore. Get off on other people's misery, do you? Calm down. Are you his guard dog or something? 
What's turn your light? Firing. I reckon if you left it with me for a few hours, I'll be out of time. I think it'd be more a case of turning her rather than taming her. Sorry? She's a lesbian. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah? Gina, what can I do for you? Debbie McAllister. When was the last time you saw her? I don't know. It was, uh, it was a while back. Is that one month or two, Jack? Look, I'm sure I'm the last person she wants visiting her. You're a line manager. Isn't it part of your job to keep a check on her? I don't need you to tell me how to do my job. Oh. Word of advice, Jack. If you want to keep McAllister, I suggest you get down to that hospital pronto because she is about to walk. We're talking about serious criminal damage and your name has come up several times. Yeah, but no proof. Oi, I want out. Basically, he's harmless, you know. No, that's not what I've been told. Do you mind? Someone's levelled a far more serious accusation against you, Paul. Blackmail. Who said that? Well, like you don't know. Peter Haynes? He's accused me of blackmail. His mum said he's terrified of you. Said you've made threats against them. All in his head. The only thing he's scared of is being found out. What does that mean? Well, he's a nonce. How do you know? Because my aunt used to live in the same road as him in Robert. Had to move out about four years ago. So you don't think what you're doing is blackmail? I don't ask him for money. No, you just threatened to go around and doing his mum. I wouldn't attack an old woman. Are you denying you've ever made a threat to Peter that you'd hurt his mum? Yeah, I'm denying it. If you want to ask me anything else, you better charge me with something. Because I want my brief here. If we hear of you ever going to Mr Haynes or his... Mrs. Haynes' blackmail accusation. What's that? Peter was accused of sexually assaulting a ten-year-old boy in 1998. Was he convicted? No, Kathy, but mud sticks, doesn't it? You and Tanya, what happened? Well, the same thing that happens to one in three marriages we split up. Oh, yeah, it was not a normal split, though, was it? What's that supposed to mean? Oh, we're gonna go. We're gonna see Mrs. Haynes, yeah? Yeah, Kathy was just telling me that Tanya preferred, you know, what? Well, did she mistake you for a woman or something? I'm about to lose my kids and you think it's something to joke about. Well, we've got to go. Come on. And thank you for spreading my private life around the station. I don't want you anywhere near me right now. What are you looking at? I never want to be paired with you again. Oh, come on, you've enjoyed it. The adrenaline buzz. I knew the kid wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> You're unbelievable. Not figuring, are we? No, ma'am. Good. Super wants you in the yard. Now. I am talking to you. Look, me and Brandon have a very good working relationship, and you, you idiot, you've just kind of ruined it. Whoa, 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 I didn't know the background oh, information. It was know. an innocent enough really remark. Oi, keep it down, I'll take it outside. You disgust me. Sorry about that. Just because you fancy him, <laughs> all right? Don't think I haven't noticed. <laughs> Kathy? What happened? Uh, it was just a misunderstanding, Gov. Well, I don't know what it was about, but I suggest you go and make amends. Sharpish. Any news? 
Uh, we're still following up inquiries. And that means what exactly? That you've moved on to other business? So much for solidarity. Uh, have you seen Mrs Haynes leave her house? No. Well, she's not answering. Well, she doesn't get out much, aside from her trips to the hospital. She's not well? A bit unsteady on her feet. She broke her arm last year, fractured her wrist a few months later. Oh. Call an ambulance. There you are. All well done. Oh, I just wanted to say sorry. No problem. Really. I don't know what to do. Uh, I mean, should I go with her? No. Is she going to be all right? She'll be fine, don't worry. Adele. Well. Did you see anyone entering the house? No. I saw Peter leave for work, but that was all. Then again, I've been at the back of the shop most of the morning cleaning up. And what about your husband? Is he around? Is he in the shop? Adele, what is it? He's gone to find Paul Simmons. Oh, no, no, you're joking. He was convinced you weren't going to do anything about it. Get out the car. Constables Des Tavener, Gemma Osborne. This is Denise, headmistress. Good morning. Hey. It's very good of you to do this. Is it? I'll just go and check everyone's assembled. In a moment. You too. You are kidding. You don't get a say in this, Tavern. Trying the other side of the estate. What's the name? Name! Paul Simmons! Grab an ambulance, please. I found Mr. Aziz. Now just take it easy, yeah? Yeah. The orange juice is mine. Hi. I wonder if you could help me. I want my brief. Well, I hope he's good. Paul Simmons. Okay, everyone, settle down. Today, we're very lucky to have two police officers from Sun Hill Station with us. And they're going to talk to you all about road safety. I didn't know you were coming down here. Oh, I couldn't resist. <laughs> they look absolutely petrified. I'm sure Dez will take a room full of hardened criminals rather than what's going on in there. I do hope they don't completely shame themselves or us. Denise, headmistress. Oh, hi. Inspector Gina Gold. You're Gina. Nice to put the face to the name. Heard lots about you. I better go back in. Good to have met you. Yeah. You See you later. She seems very friendly. Denise. Oh, Denise. She's my wife. I thought I'd mentioned. Uh, no, you didn't, funnily enough. She's very nice. Oh, let's get back. See you. You said that you'd come and talk to me. I did. I'm the one that found you. You were late. I came as quick as I could. Who did this to you? I must have left the door open when I went to the wheelie bin. He said, better keep your mouth shut or he'd be back. Who was it? The kid that did in the shop window. 
Paul Simmons. What time did you leave the house, Peter? Twelve. So you were with your mom from the last time I saw you till 12 p.m.? Yeah. In which case, Mrs. Haynes, Paul Simmons has got a rock-solid alibi. The one with the short, dark hair. Which one? The one drinking the orange. We've actually told her she's got a presentation to do when she gets back. I don't think she'd take it seriously, though. <laughs> oh. Why don't you slip some vodka in that orange? Sure. He was with your neighbour, Mr. Aziz. Well, I hope Mr. Aziz knocked seven bells out of the kid. It's quite the opposite, I'm afraid. He's being tended to in A&E. Why don't you lock these kids up? If you'd told us it was Paul who smashed the window in the first place, chances are he would be locked up. Why didn't you tell us, Mrs. Haynes? You shouldn't be interviewing her when she's like this. I'm going to talk to the nurse. Yeah, you go and do that, and you tell the nurse how your mum got these injuries while you were there. What do you mean by that? I think you know exactly what I mean. Go on. Get out. They've got a polish us. They should have done it properly. I hate all this laying your lesson level crap. That was embarrassing. I know, dressing us up in stupid costumes. It's tantamount to office bullying. Bosses get all up in front of tribunals for stuff like that. Yeah, well, I've got a good mind to take it up with the Federation rep. Have you? Yeah. Or maybe I'll just have it out with the super instead. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll back you up. Uh huh. In here now. Sir, Des and I have been talking and we both felt, well, we both feel that... We both feel that we've been undermined and humiliated with the treatment that's been meted out to us today. Right. And we're thinking about making a complaint. Are you really? If I was you, Tavener, I'd think again and stand up straight, both of you, officers of the law. I wouldn't trust you to cross the road, let alone drive on it. So you have a good to explain? No, me. Constable. I'm not finished. Do you realise how serious it is, conducting races in police vehicles? That all it needs is one young child chasing a ball, or one older person who can't see or hear too well, and you're facing manslaughter? Well, do you? Sir. Sir. I run this, Nick. I make the rules. And I will not have you two reckless idiots bringing this station into disrepute. Sir, it... Just got a bit out of hand, it won't happen again. Damn right, PC Osborne, it won't. Because if it does, next time you'll both be facing official disciplinary action. Is that clear? Sir. Sir. Good. Well, unless you're waiting for me to send letters home to your parents, I suggest you get out of my office. What triggered it off this time? Did Peter find out you were going to talk to me about Paul? I love my son. Broken arm. Autumn of last year. Broken wrist a few weeks earlier. Usually he manages to avoid your face, though. Yeah, he obviously loves you too, Joyce. You don't understand the pressure he's under. I think I do. Did they have him on remand while he was awaiting trial? It was the loneliest time of my life. Joyce, I want you to make a statement. You have to stop this from ever happening again. I almost lost my boy once. I'm never, never going to let that happen again, you understand? No. No, I don't. What's making you think Peter has the right to do this to you? Do you have kids? Yes. Um, would you let someone snatch them away from you? If they attacked me the way that Peter has done to you, then yes. 
Well, you don't love your kids as much as I love mine. <laughs> Whatever Peter is, I've made him that way. Hello, Debbie. We're all looking forward to having you back. Oh, come on, Jack. I bet it never even occurred to you that I'd come back to Sun Hill. <laughs> Must have been a relief. When Inspector Gold told you I wasn't coming back, I take it she sent you down here? Well, uh, I don't think you'd want to see me. If I'd have known you were having thoughts about leaving. I want you back at Sun Hill, Debbie. And I want you and I to get back on an even footing. Also, I don't think this is the time for you to be making a major decision about your career. What do you mean? Well, you've got the baby to consider. All I've done for the past two months is sat here and consider the baby. Now I've got to sort myself out. I'm gonna go and get a drink. Oi. When did you start smacking her about? Was it before or after the court case? You don't know what I've been through. It doesn't matter that I was found innocent. People just thought I was lucky. And were you? I lost my house, my job, my mum lost her health. And the worst thing is, it could all happen again. It only takes one person to make an allegation. No, Peter, it takes proof. I was put on section 43 for three months. I was sharing with a bloke who raped a three-year-old. So don't tell me you lot don't get it wrong. Don't tell me I've got nothing to be scared of. Well, I'm sorry about what happened. But don't let it ruin your life. And your mother's too. She won't talk about it. She won't even acknowledge it's happened. And using her as a punch bag makes you feel better. You so much as touch your mother again. And I swear to you, I'll personally come round and sort you out. Are you all right? Hey. How's the baby? Better. Yeah, he's fine. Good. Well, make the most of him while he's young. The older they get, the harder it gets. See you later. Have you given him a name yet? I had to. Sorry? You have to call it something so you can register the birth. So what is it? Andrew. Come back to the station. You need people around you who know you. People who can support you. Is that a yes? Yeah. Once you're back at work, you can put all that in perspective. It'll feel more manageable. This will never feel manageable.
Is there a problem? Would you mind stepping out of the vehicle, please? Brandon. I don't want to talk to you, Kathy. Did you not get the message? What message? Your ex-wife's in the custody suite. Tanya, what's she doing here? Heavy lunchtime session. She's been poor for drink driving. <laughs> You know, if it's any consolation, I was absolutely petrified the first time I held my kid. Don't worry, he won't break. Just hold him good and tight and support his head. I don't want to. You'll be all right. Oh, look, he's so good. How's it feel? You know, some people say if they don't know what to expect, they'll never have had it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Take him away from me. Where are you going, Debbie? Tanya. Brandon. What happened? I, I was just a lunch with friends. I barely drank. Two glasses of wine, that's it. You failed a breath test. I hadn't drunk enough to put myself over the limit. Well, obviously you had, otherwise you wouldn't have failed it. The desk sergeant will tell you what to do. You know what I think? I've been set up. You've set me up, Brandon. <laughs> Next time on The Bill. Jim! Stop! Now, if you ask me, Jim screwed up. Good and proper. Just tell me your side of the story. Why? Why? You obviously believe her. If I've lost that job in Scotland because of this conviction, you'll be the one that pays for it.